Good morning, everybody. Greetings from Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, Karar. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. This perfectly shoots the background of my technique, which I developed way back in early mid-90s, maybe 93, 94, 95. There was a child with a TMJ ankylosis by the dental people. They brought it. And we did not have any fiber optic scope that time in the 90s. So that was, uh, I passed on uh, uh, epidural needle into the uh, cricothyroid membrane of that patient. I, I thought I should uh, develop, should use my own uh, method. So I passed on epidural needle. And so that there were German imported uh, catheters were there. They were quite uh, good uh, stiffness was there in that. So when I passed that, I was thinking that it will come through the mouth. It directly came through the nose. Then I was in cardiac also, and I we were using this uh, J-tip guide wire and all that. I read somewhere in the journal about the J-tip guide wire. So I thought that curve will help it uh, negotiate the nasal curvy nasal passage. So when I used that, uh, very nicely it came directly through the nose. So I started uh, regularly using this. Uh, uh, technique then I used to then I thought of using the CR image uh, intensifier came so I uh, used to see the passage of the guide wire through that uh, uh, CR and all that published one article in Indian Journal also I was called to go up by that uh, without a fiber optic laryngoscope the retrograde catheter method is an accepted option for management see even when the fiber optic fails also I had a couple of uh, uh, times when even fiber optic could not be passed, you know, one uh, tennis ball shaped tumor was there from the upper jaw in the mouth where uh, we could not even pass the fiber optic scope. That time we used this technique, and Dr. Kotur was there with me in the KLE that time. So we used this technique, and it was very wonderfully we could pass the uh, tube. So that even when fiber optic fails, this technique is always there. <laughs> so that is the uh, beauty of this. Uh, uh, thing. It was first described by Butler and Cirillo in 1960. Uh, it is a fading art, they say, but uh, still a useful technique, always. Always comes in handy whenever we are in difficulties. So we should be familiar with this technique. That's what I feel. Even now, even in the present or even in future also. Even fibroptic laryngoscope may not be available everywhere. So that time and uh, Huge maintenance cost. Patients continue to present for surgery and cannot afford to travel to center. Our patient uh, refused to travel. Uh, we told him there is a fiber optic scope is not there, so he can go to Kolhapur or Pune or something. But he refused. He said he wanted to be operated here only. So I told the uh, dental surgeon that I will use my technique. Traditional technique of uh, involves several steps. You know, they used to bring bring it out uh, uh, from the cricothyroid membrane puncture one catheter through the mouth and another through the nose and tie them together and make it straight and all that. But uh, what I told is uh, technique, so the catheter, J-tipped catheter or flexible tipped catheter, which you use it in urology, you know, that uh, long green wire, they use it for uh, ureteric uh, catheterization. So that catheter I'm using. So it is very beautiful and it is non-traumatic also. Several modifications have been reported for the technique. Here is how I do it. Equipment used is 18 gauge uh, cannula I use. Earlier I used to use epidural catheter. Now I'm using a cannula so that I can retain it in the trachea. Suppose uh, emergency, uh, but emergency trachea has to, be, has to be kept ready in any type of airway, a difficult airway procedure. That is what is needed always. And then uh, this cannula, if I use, I can do emergency ventilation also. So I started using this 18 gauge cannula for this and uh, directed upwards uh, into the trachea. And uh, Terumo guide wire of size 0.89 millimeter I use nowadays. And it's a urology, they use green, long green catheter. And it is very beautiful catheter and very nice, non traumatic. And uh, lignocaine for airway blocks. For any airway, uh, fiber optic, whatever uh, airway block we are doing, same airway block, nebulization with uh, lignocaine and uh, bilateral, the superior laryngeal block I use. And intratracheal also, I inject a small quantity of lignocaine, making the patient a little head low so that it will direct to the larynx and all that and anesthetize there. We use appropriate size 
endotracheal tube. One size less if you use it is always good. Nowadays, some little tapering endotracheal tubes are available. So that will be very nice, like Covidian or somebody has developed. Any endotracheal tube will do. Little less size you use, that is better to negotiate through the laryngeal inlet and all that. I started using bougie for this technique also. I will describe you how I use that uh, bougie for this. Earlier, I was not using bougie. Over directly over the guide wire, I used to thread the tube. Now, additional bougie I am using. Informed consent, that is important. Cannula is by intravenous uh, IV started. Pre medication, we use the induction ranitidine and uh, glycoperlate. Of course, uh, ASA standard monitor, sedation. I started using 0.5 mg low dose ketamine with uh, dexmedoxamine, 0.3 microgram per kg IV. That's all first one dose I use. Nothing more than that. For three minutes, we just uh, give as a sort of pre medication. I don't use continuous. It gives a very good uh, sedation. Pre oxygenation with JR circuit, 6 liter oxygen per minute, bilateral superior laryngeal nerve block. Then, for trans tricycle block, 18 grade candela was passed into the trachea by puncturing the. I go to subcricoid space so instead of uh, cricothyroid membrane because I get uh, more length into the trachea for the endotracheal tube so that uh, I am. I should not be worried about uh, slipping out of the when it is uh, being threaded uh, or when being uh, when it was being rotated. The guide wire was removed. So I have to uh, direct you have to pass it further deeper into the trachea. So that time it should not come out of the larynx. So with that idea, I thought it should get more length uh, into the trachea uh, when I roll read the uh, endotracheal tube. 18 kg bandla uh, syringe uh, with a syringe, uh, air bubbles are there in the syringe and uh, we inject it. It will make the head flow, the patient head flow a bit. The cannula is pushed further at uh, 45 degree in the upward direction into the trachea, simultaneously removing the needle. And through the sheet, 4% lignocaine was flushed into the trachea. Then through the secured 18 kg cannula, 0.89 millimeter to remove guide wire that is they used in the urology was inserted, threaded upwards, and it just emerged out through the nose without any difficulty. But first time you have to see which nose is bigger and all that. Sometimes it may come through the wrong uh, nostril. So you can block that nostril so that uh, uh, that time, it has, it has never happened to me. If you are worried about that, you can block that nostril with the airway or something. And through the other nostril, it will come. That is the thing. This schematic diagram showing the endotracheal tube inserted. See, this is the guide wire here, the black one, which is there. And when I insert the guide wire, I uh, then over that I roll right the endotracheal tube, and it will stop here. The endotracheal tube will stop here because, and through the Murphy eye, I put this. So it will stop here because the guide wire is exiting here or entering here. So that if the guide wire is removed, what happens is the endotracheal tube has to be pushed. But that time it may slip out. That's what I, I it has not happened, but it may slip out. So what I do after putting the endotracheal, railroading the endotracheal tube and it stops here, I put a bougie here. So bougie is quite a good length. I'll trick into the trigger and then remove the guide wire and then just push the endotracheal tube over the bougie. So it will be very easy keeping the guide wire taut. So somebody assistant has to keep that guide wire taut. And then the bougie, which is shown in Bingler, was introduced through the endotracheal tube, passed it distally for sufficient distance into trachea as an additional precaution in order to prevent any chances of the endotracheal tube popping out of the laryngeal inlet while guide wire was removed. So through the guide wires, a six millimeter soft endotracheal was railroaded via Murphy's eye in a rotating motion. I, what happens is when you push the endotracheal tube, sometimes it hits the anterior uh, tracheal wall and gets stuck there. Or the laryngeal inlet, it may get stuck there, you know. So what I do, I use a little rotating motion. So whatever that uh, part which gets stuck will move out and then it becomes easy. So this is a screwing motion is used actually. Tube is railroaded smoothly past the laryngeal inlet into the trachea and it's further to halt it at the entry point of the guide wire. At this point, uh, you can connect the ATH over two and see whether the tube is inside the trachea. That I used uh, recently in the most recent patient. I used that ATH over two also. Later, a bougie was introduced through the endotracheal tube, past its distal end for a sufficient distance as an additional precaution. 
after securing the tube, buji was then what I did after passing the buji, I removed the guide wire. So buji are there in the trachea and then pass the tube further into the trachea for a particular distance. Confirm it by auscultation and further anesthetic checkers. Yes, this is the more video of the technique which I am describing with the superior laryngeal nerve block is uh, being drawn at the hyoid bone, at the lateral aspect of the hyoid bone, corner of the hyoid bone, with 1% uh, lipocaine. Now I am passing the cannula, patient gain cannula. Upward direction, I am passing the cannula. Then, this is the long uh, uh, terimo guide wire of 0.9 millimeter. 0.9. Coming out directly through the nose. Over that, uh, through the Murphy eye, endotracheal tube is there. Uh, Keeping the two sides of the terimo guide wire taut. Bit of rotating motion, this is the thing. And it will pass smoothly into the trachea. Then I connect the angle connector so that I can see the confirm with the ETHO to monitor whether the tube is in the trachea or not. It's there in the trachea now that the uh, capnogram is coming. Then I pass a bougie over that and then remove the guide wire from lower side it is guide. Guide wire capture. Then easily the endotracheal tube is passed and then connect to the. Again, we can uh, reconfirm again to the ET show to monitor and uh, auscultation bilateral for your entry and further courses. So these are the main key steps. So thank you very much.